Hey guys, in this video, uh, we're going to kind of wrap up uh, my little unit on complex numbers, but we're going to discuss how one would necessarily find complex solutions of quadratic equations, okay? And so I think it'd be important first and foremost to mention that these are, these are uh, quadratic equations, so they're parabolas, but these are parabolas that never, never touch the x-axis. That is, that is, basically, if they don't touch the x-axis, then they don't have any zeros. If they don't have any zeros, they just weren't factorable in the first place. Uh, so basically, a, a prime example, one that I can think of right off the top of my head would be something, something like maybe x squared plus 4, okay? And this would be like our f of x. And, and you know, kind of the reasoning behind this would be, you know, I can easily imagine this in my head. We could say, okay, so x squared plus 4 would be this parabola that has it has, of course, a y-intercept of 4. We could say it's just our x-squared graph that's been translated of 4, but it doesn't have any zeros, okay? So uh, bottom line is if I said, well, hey, let's, let's try to factor this thing, uh, you would not be able to do so. It's just unfactorable. And also, you know, if we said, well, let's solve this, let's, let's try to solve for some zeros here, uh, we could set this equal to 0, okay? The bottom line, though, is when we solve this, we end up with x-squared equals negative 4. Uh, and we end up with, okay, so x is equal to the square root of negative 4. So now, this is a, a spot where I kind of want to stop real quick and talk about this. Uh, whenever you see a negative inside this radical, it's very, very important that the first thing we do is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of it by placing an i out front and then making this positive. You know, we know we often refer to this as the principal square root of this negative radical here, or radical and negative. Uh, I'm not going to go into the vocabulary very much, but basically what I'm saying is whenever you see a negative, a negative inside this radical, uh, an even index radical, if this number out here is even, this is square root, um, we'll kick out an i, and then we'll just take the square root from here. And so in this instance, we end up with, with just 2i, 2i, okay? And, and, and no, right now I'm not being a stickler. We should probably say plus or minus 2i, but basically what we could say is uh, plus or minus 2i, well, yeah, let's go ahead and do it plus or minus 2i. We're finding the roots, the roots, the zeros of this uh, polynomial equation or this quadratic equation. So we say plus or minus 2i. And the reason why I have to say plus or minus is because since it's degree 2, we need to have two zeros, uh, exactly two zeros according to the fundamental theorem of algebra. So we get a positive 2i and a negative 2i as our zeros. Okay, so this is going to be like the primary ambition of this video is basically to say, look, I've got a bunch of quadratic things that don't have any real zeros. I'm only going to get imaginary or complex solutions. Uh, and so we saw one example now that we knew didn't have any real zeros uh, and was not factorable, but it was a little bit easier to solve. What if, what if we did more, uh, oh wow, am I going to say it, a more complex example? I know, I just said that. But uh, 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 and this is like our f of x, okay? This is our function of x. Um, yeah, why don't we take a look at this? So we got a positive 3, negative 2, and a positive 5. So 3x squared uh, minus 2x plus 5. So there she is, way up here, never touches the x-axis, doesn't have any zeros whatsoever, okay? So what I know is this, it's not factorable, because if it were factorable, hey, we'd be setting it equal to 0 and solving it by now. Um, so the idea here is that we're going to get two complex roots, not two real roots, but two complex roots. And so here I am uh, basically trying to get across to you how one necessarily does this. And so I might as well just come right out and say it. If you have a situation in which you're trying to solve for, say, the zeros of this, the zeros, okay, uh, and you don't have any real zeros, it's not going to be factorable. We're going to have to solve it using the quadratic equation, which of course is x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I think it's worth our time to basically illustrate at this point, the thing that's going to cause this to be complex in the first place is the fact that this b squared minus 4ac quantity, okay, if you remember from your algebra, is less than zero. This is referred to as the discriminant, okay? I want to be really clear on this. I've heard, man, I've heard even teachers say it wrong. It drives me nuts. Then discriminant, okay, the discriminant, all right, thank you, thank you, discriminant, we don't want to discriminate, all right, that being said, uh, let's go back over here and basically illustrate, you know, in this instance here, we've got an A value of 3, a B value of negative 2, and a C value of this, um, fact of the matter is this, 
if we were to say find b squared minus 4ac just for just for fun here, uh, we're going to notice that it is negative. Uh, we get b squared is negative 2 squared. Uh, 4 times a, a is 3, and then c is 5. So we end up with uh, 4 minus uh, 12 times 5. 12 fives is 60. So 4 minus 60, we end up with negative 56. Okay. Uh, so what's going to be in here when we do our quadratic formula to solve this bad boy? It's going to be negative, which is going to produce some complex roots. So let's go and get this party sorted. We've got, so x, in this case, we're going to solve this, is negative b, excuse me, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now I'm going to borrow this time. I, I know I made that radical bar quite long, but we know it comes out to be negative 56 because we did it up there. But yes, you would write b squared minus 4ac in here and do your order of operations. This is all over 2a. And so we say an a value here, we get an a value of 3, okay, and a b value to begin with was negative 2. So here's what we end up with. We say x, well it equals 2 plus or minus radical 56. Now, radical negative 56. We mentioned up top, when you have a negative in here, it's your responsibility to put an i up front and make this positive. Okay, and then now this is all over 6. Let's continue to simplify this. So I say, okay, so are there any perfect squares that proceed into 56? 56. I think uh, that's divisible by 4. Happens to be uh, 4 times, 4 times what, 14? So this is the same thing as 2 plus or minus i, 4 times 14, all over 6. Proceeding right onward, we say 2 plus or minus, now we know the square root of 4 is 2, we'll put that out front, so we got plus or minus 2 times the i that was already out there times the remaining 14 here, all over, I see that switch color is 6. And so now, uh, we see that everything on top and everything on bottom are divisible by 2. So we can divide everything by 2, this becomes 3, this is 1 and 1. So we end up with 1 plus or minus, excuse me, i radical 14 all over 3. So now, what I want you to keep in mind is this. Essentially, we tend to like to write our solutions as complex numbers in standard form. So if I were to say, well, let's write this as a plus bi, we'll just take everything on top divided by this 3. We'll split it three ways. Kind of like when we did quotient division, and we just had you know, a real number value down here, which was awesome. We just say then 1 divided by 3 plus or minus, now in this case, 14. Radical 14 is our constant. We're going to write plus or minus radical 14 thirds i. And I know this is very ugly, but uh, this is like our a, we have a b value, and we have our i, okay? So this is just our complex number in standard form. So when you solve, when you solve a quadratic especially uh, with complex zeros, just know that you're going to be using the quadratic formula. You know, like that's something that should be burned into your heads hopefully anyways. But if it's not, just recall from algebra, you need to be using your quadratic formula. When you do, you get complex roots, hey, they have to be able to be written as complex numbers in standard form. They have to be able to be written in standard form. Okay, so hopefully hey, that helps everybody out.